BMW wants $1,205 to replace this little $10 plastic part. So let's figure out how to do it ourselves. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the garage for another episode with the BMW. Thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and yes, you heard that correctly. This thing, this little retaining clip, costs $1,200 if you go to the BMW dealership to have them replace it. Now, what is this, you might say? Uh, it's a very common problem on the F30 3 Series and actually many other cars uh, between, I think it's 2012 and 2019 from 1 Series on up to 4 Series if you go online and look. This clip exists on a lot of cars. So what does it do and why am I concerned with it? This is a noise that I started hearing about a year ago. Initially, I thought that was something related to fuel starvation. It kind of sounds like somebody is trying to get the last bits of a milkshake out of a cup with a straw. And I just kind of ignored it because it didn't impact performance in any way or impact anything else in any way. It's just an unpleasant sound. The weird thing was that it would change location in the car depending on how full my fuel tank was, which is another reason why I thought it was related to the fuel. Now, what would happen was that noise would come from directly beneath the center console or kind of back in the back seat. I noticed over time after hauling some people around and some other stuff that it was definitely dependent on the weight in the car, which again, kind of made me think it was a fuel starvation issue. And Kind of went with that, didn't think anything of it until I was doing the transmission video, got into the car and realized that the fuel lines do not run anywhere near the center of the car. Here's a little angle. You can see the center of the car versus where the fuel lines actually go towards the front. Below the center hump is drive shaft, heat shield, exhaust. There's nothing else there other than some parking brake lines, which I didn't really think anything of. Didn't see anything out of place when I was down there. But I was driving my wife to the airport last week, taken off from an intersection under kind of heavy load, and heard the sound very loudly. And she really didn't know what it was, was very uncomfortable with this. So I thought maybe it's time that I actually figure out what this is. The sound would typically come when there was a little heavier load in the vehicle, but also when I'm really giving it a lot of gas. Sometimes put it in sport mode and go cruise around town, take off fast. And I would notice that that is specifically when the sound would come on the most. After doing a little more digging, I finally found out that this clip is responsible for holding up the two parking brake cables that run directly above the drive shaft to the back of the car. And apparently it's a very common fault point that not a lot of people know about or talk about until it starts making this very odd noise. And what literally happens is this clip lets go and the plastic tube that contains the parking brake line touches the drive shaft under certain conditions. So when the, the car is heavier or when you're accelerating more quickly, the suspension squats, it can make that connection there. It makes a lot of sense now that I know what it is, but before, didn't really know what was going on at all. So, like I said, $1,200 from the BMW dealership. They were actually very nice about it. The uh, service technician that I spoke to, uh, she, she knew that it was going to be a lot of money and she was not judgmental at all or anything when I told her that I was going to be trying this myself. So, let's get under there and see what it's like, I imagine. 
it is just a significant amount of book time if you were to go to the dealership. You take this, maybe BMW charges 50 bucks for it. Take tax off of there, you're around maybe, I don't know, $1,100, something like that. Divide that down into somewhere between 150 and 200 bucks an hour for, uh, for labor at BMW. Probably a five to seven hour job. So we're gonna see how long this actually takes because I supposedly need to drop the drive shaft and the exhaust and unbolt the back of the fuel tank because this also serves as a fuel tank mount. So let's get into it and see what the hell happens. eight minutes so here is a view of where we have to access you can see the brake cables there's one there and you can see this one over here is laying down a bit more and if I move it it actually moves around you can see a little thing there where it's been scraping on the heat shield so if I can get in here and show you so here we can see the actual clip way back above the drive shaft here you can see the nut you can see where the one, the left side, brake cable is attached. You can't really see the right attachment points very easily, but you can see this, where it clearly touches the drive shaft. And I bet if we could get in there far enough, we could actually see a point where it's been scraping. So, that's what we're going to try to get into. Alright, let's do this. I think we're going to start with taking off the heat shield. Just seeing how far that gets us. Each of these little plastic 10 mil nuts, really not bad. Two, three, four for the rear section at least. Really don't want to take off the exhaust. Got to see what time it was when we officially started. About 12:25 when we actually start. I'm gonna guess a T50 on here. Yep. So this cross brace back here has six T50 torques on it. Got to take that out to get the rest of the heat shield and stuff out of the way. Creeper cam activated. Let's see how well this works. Right, going back under here, you can see here fuel tank has one, two straps. Heat shield is attached to it here and here. Which, there we go, that's off now. What we're going to do is loosen these last couple 10 mil sockets here that are little plastic guys. Come out there. Oops. Well, it's on the creeper somewhere. Yeah, that moves a little bit. So, we'll call that good. Each side of this tank has a strap with a 13 millimeter bolt on it. Looking back there, that probably needs to drop an inch to be able to get it out. 
Oof. That's important. Look at that. This one is way the hell up here. Well, that one's wide open. This one's behind a control arm, a bunch of other junk. Yeah, I refuse to drop the drive shaft to get this done. I'm just gonna break that clip. Hold, please. Now we have all the wrenches, another light, and a screwdriver. Let's get this done. Hey. Yeah, let's go. Clip is undone. Get our ratcheting wrench here. It's not as easy as that would have hoped. There it is. Got it. This is going to be incredibly difficult to get back on. My neck is definitely going to be sore tomorrow. After that uh, transmission video, my hip and left shoulder were sore for like a week. Alright, come on. You're done. You're done. Get out of there. Oh, there's a light. Can I get my hand on it? Yeah, it's my hand. Uh, <laughs> there's the nut. How the hell do I get you out of there? I'm really hoping just lowering this thing is adequate. force this thing, but I do need it to come over. Let's go get the other one and see what's mounted in there. Of course. I already brought the other one under here. Alright, so looks like it's in this way. Which means that I have to pop those two clips up. Yeah, we'll pull it back. Ten millimeters in the side of the creeper. Don't forget. There we go. It's off. <laughs> Need a smaller screwdriver. Happens, I'm just going to get in here and zip tie this. Where are the where those are? There it is. It goes in like this. Oh, I have to be not to break these. So the hold up here is that I have to be able to slide this back in there without snapping those clips off. Turn what broke to begin with. Requires finesse, which I'm not sure that I have. Well, gotta give it to them. They build a very robust brake line. Okay. So, change plans. Flipping them shut. Put it in place so they don't break them. I think that's what we have to do, really. Okay, it's up there. It's up there. Okay, that's it. I just have to pop those things open again without breaking them. Okay, got one open. Okay, let's do that. 
getting this back in there is going to be insanely difficult. You gotta do it by hand. And of course the washer is separate from the nut. No, 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 no. Oh, almost dropped it. In theory, this side's more open, but that brake line is just so in the way. Oh, my arms are shaking. Oh, it's on. It's on. Yeah, let's say you absolutely need a ratcheting wrench to do this part of it. Oh, tore my glove. That's great. Right. Snug, but not too tight. Breaking it. Got it. Actually, getting these clipped is probably going to be very difficult. I didn't just break that, did I? No, I did not. I'm really not sure how I'm going to do that. Maybe a needle nose. Cheapo Lowe's cobalt light a few years ago. It's awesome for all kinds of things. Can't get in with the pliers. Got it. Crowbars. Ah. Not trying to break anything, just my little leverage. in the heat shield are a different color, possibly a different material, than the ones on this, I'll just call it an underside cover, that are black. Okay. Tight to begin with, snug and plus a little. Okay. All right, that's it. It is one thirty-one. It took an hour.
And there you have it. We're done. That process, the actual working time, legitimately was like an hour. It took, I don't know, 15 minutes to set up and tear everything down, maybe slightly more. But overall, I think hour and 45 minutes is where the clock came in at. It was very doable. And I, I'm i surprised at how long it took versus how long the book probably tells you that it should take. It was just a lot of tight spaces and being confident in how you're moving things around. Things to remember, you're going to have to pull that tank down probably once you get the straps adjusted correctly and shift it towards the driver's side so that you can get the new clip in there and get your get your hands together. Something important to note, when you're putting the clip in and you're mounting the tank back up, close the clip. This thing, those things that are broken on there, close those as you're installing this because otherwise they'll move around a lot and they'll snap again. And they're actually pretty easy to open once it's back up in there, you just gotta get like a long flathead screwdriver and put it in there and just pop it open. And then closing the clip again, once you get the stupid brake lines back up in there, it's just, like I said, tight spaces. But it was easy, no special tools. It was a T50 Torx, 13 millimeter or half inch um, socket and a bunch of little 10 millimeter bolts holding on like the heat shield and the underbody stuff. I think that was it. Super simple. I hope it was helpful for you guys. Now here we see if it worked. Success! You saw it. Full throttle. I haven't gone full throttle in the car in a very long time because I've been so annoyed with hearing that sound. I forgot what it felt like to do that in the car. And I forgot how much I missed it. I it, These things you get used to because you just don't feel like or know how to fix them exactly. You don't really know what's wrong. That is a great feeling. I went in there thinking I knew what it was. Turns out it was the problem that I thought it was, and we fixed it, and the car's back to perfect. And it is, we started all this at about noon today. It's three o'clock right now. Like I said, it took 
an hour and a half, 45, to do the process. I clearly cleaned myself up a little bit. And then I just got back from the store. I wanted to go make sure the car was warmed up a little bit so I could stomp on it a little bit. So thanks for joining. I hope you're enjoying this. If you do like these videos, please subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. And if you feel like sharing with anybody, by all means, please do that. And if there's anything else that you want to see specifically with the BMW, let me know. Uh, it seems like the other video I posted has gotten a really good response and I do all of my own work on these cars. And if there's anything little, a little job you haven't been able to attack, or if there's been anything that you don't know how to get in there, let me know and maybe I'll check it out on my car and show you. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next one.